Ultra, Telda, Rizda and uh, Nash. So uh, it would be nicer petang ni kita bercakap tentang uh, campaign anti tariff by EU. Sah je. Boleh. Alright. So that's it. Alright. Uh, first, thank you for coming to this uh, session today. Ini sebenarnya hari ini hari dalam sejarah. For the first time we have with us here today wakil-wakil dari Telda, Rizda, Pekebun Kecil and Telkra. And between us, we represent nearly all the 680,000 smallholders in this country and also another 5 million dependents. So we are representing a big portion of the population of Malaysia. And the reason why we have this meeting and this PC is because of our concern with the recent European Parliament decision coming out with a new European Commission Delegated Regulation Act, which classify palm oil as a cause of deforestation. And this act is now for comments and if this act is passed, meaning that from 2020, palm oil will be banned in Europe for biofuel usage. So this has got very big implication to the uptake of the oil and and will definitely affect the income of the swallowers, which are already suffering now because of low prices. So we, we are very concerned, so we have decided to make a stand and request the government to assist us, and also we are going to assist the government in showing our solidarity behind that. <coughs> So there are a few suggestion proposals which we want to make to the government. First of all, we are in the midst of negotiating the EU FTA agreement. So we are requesting the government to basically hold that negotiation until the issue of the palm oil being banned in Europe is resolved. All right? So the second thing which we are asking the government is for now and even until the decision is made by Europe on the support of palm oil to stall all negotiation on any contracts of business dealing with Europe. So this is the outcome of our meeting today and all four Association or organization has come to a common agreement in this matter. Are there a purpose or other? How are you going to pressure the government to, you know, to agree with your reaction on this uh, stall on this uh, negotiation? Because you know something, it has been a long time that we try to convince the European that technically palm oil is good. Technically palm oil is sustainable. Technically palm oil does not cause deforestation. But nobody is listening to us technically. So the only way to approach this pattern now is to political and economic means. We need to be aggressive. We need to go the offensive. We have been very diplomatic, we have been very tactful, we have been very nice when dealing with this matter. But I think it's not is enough for us now. Yes. In fact, minggu lalu saya we were in Jakarta attending the Sipoxi meeting with Indonesia. And during that meeting, we have agreed that we're going to have a common stand with Indonesia. No more on technical ground, we go on political and economic. So with Indonesia joining hand with us, we carry more club. So 
never forget Indonesia has got 260 million population. And with us, 30 million, 300 million, they have to hear us. If it has to reach to that extent, it is not our decision. But we are trying to tell the government that we need to do that to make the European government or some certain countries in European and EU to, to not have discrimination policies against palm oil. Sekarang ni, the issue dengan rantau Eropa, dia yang keluarkan undang-undang baru sekarang. Menyusah itu. Okay, Europe punya portion total consumption tak besar sangat. 7.5 million ton. Out of the 70 million ton produced worldwide, for palm oil. Palm oil ada sekitar 70 juta tan and 85% of it are produced in Malaysia and Indonesia. Macam tahun lalu, Malaysia ni production was 90.5 million tan and Indonesia was 42 million tan. So, both this country has got 85% of the world production. So, EU penggunaannya setahun ialah 75 million metric tan and for biofuel, they use 40% of it. So, bermakna kalau tahun depan dia stop digunakan minyak kelapa sawit untuk barbecue, maknanya we will lose about 3 million ton straight away from our potential market in Europe. Mana? Depend on harga lah. Kalau harga sekarang you kira 2,000, you kari dengan 3 juta ton. So, it's quite substantial. Tapi yang kita kita risau ni tentang pendapatan pekebun kecil kita. Jadi tentu ada satu juga komen. Kami pekebun kecil untuk the production now is low compared to the And the worst thing is the price is also low. So they are the total income now becoming less and less and less. So just imagine if this 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 oil farm, the most profitable cost recently was <coughs> the, the, the most profitable cost. Because the smallest at that time they would not love oil farm. But, but when they saw the plantation, the sell the oil farm, they make the oil farm. So the smallest would shift from rubber to oil farm. Now rubber in Malaysia. Only 10 to 10. The rest all all farms for smallholders. So just imagine what happened to the income of smallholders if this thing is not solved. They suffer lah. Macam tahun lalu, tahun lalu, example Telkra. Telkra, we give dividends to smallholder for certain return depending on the profit. So at a all farm price of 2,000. Or even last year in November, it dropped to 1,800. Most of our project do not produce profit. So how can we give dividends? I think likewise with uh, Belda. Uh, I think we, we, we owe it to the uh, six, seven million people who uh, earn living from this oil farm. Uh, currently, these people due to the lobbies forcing down the price of CPU. The people in Sabah, they, they don't even go and harvest the, the fruits. It's left on the, on the tree to rot because the cost is a lot more. The cost of harvest is a lot more than the price they get in the forest. People that like we have 112,000 settlers, some of them very old, maybe even more than 50 years old. They, they don't have food on the table and they, they sleep hungry. And, uh, old folks cannot go to dialysis center to get the treatment. But these are the things that people need to know, the story that people need to know. The effect of this lobbyist uh, in, 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 in Europe, how it affects our poverty eradication program. And, and it involves millions of people. This is a story that we have to tell. It's not about just business, it's about people's lives.
So our plan is we are jointly going to send a memorandum to the EU Commission about the plight of our small workers. Then kalau boleh kena hantar sebelum kuih kecil ni berjumpa dengan dia orang. Because I think we owe it to our people. Don't forget, don't forget the first reason of the UN Sustainable Development Goal is poverty eradication. And Malaysia has been very successful in doing that. So that should be the priority rather than the issue about the orangutan. Uh, they claim that 25 orangutan die every day. How about 2,500 people die every day of starvation? Nobody talks about it. So so I think we have we have to do our part in this. Kita dah, in fact, Menteri dah tahu tentang kita punya stand on this and we are now working together cohesively across. Jadi sekarang ini kita sebagai wakil pertemuan-pertemuan kecil di, di Malaysia and we are working closely with the industry. <coughs> say that we should think of an alternative crop to supplement the income of our people. We cannot just switch crop and that. Okay. So it was taken out of the context of the year. They check out the tanam bulos. We are looking at this as an alternative. Okay. Okay. Additional income. Yeah. Yeah. Additional income. Yeah. It's more additional income. Yeah. The, for RISDA, we have about 140,000 smallholders. Yeah. Having about 150,000 hectares for our farm. So there's no doubt that the smallholders will have to come first in this consideration. And we will ask the government and to consider all the possible uh, artillery that we can have political and also economic. And no holds about. I think the European must, must come to terms that what they are doing is trying to derail the project that they have been had success with uh, in terms of uh, the elevation, uh, the elimination of poverty. And that is, that, that is not going to be good for us as, 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 as we develop a diplomatic relationship. You cannot have a good diplomatic relationship with countries that are basically third world, coming out of third world, and they've done successfully for, for, for the most part, and then they come up with something that will derail it, you know. So, in the name of orangutan, if you like. So, I, I think we, 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 we are we are very firm in what we think, what comes first. That is the small holders. So, we, we are very supportive of the government stand. That's why I think this is a very united stand, <coughs> supporting the government action. But we yeah. want the government to... Okay, we are looking at our schedule because the, we want to make it effective. <coughs> Number one, we, we need to make sure it's impactful. So we are discussing, we have not fixed the date, but it's not going to be too long for some. Oh, yes, yes. In fact, I think it's ongoing. It's totally not jalan terusan. Tapi yang kita kesal ni, because it is the discriminatory act of singling out palm oil. Why should you just attack palm oil? Minyak-minyak lain dia tak kisah. Macam baru ni dekat part of this delegator. Dia bagi exemption to US palm oil. Only US palm oil. Eh, hey, US Ruby. Only U.S. soybean is exempted, but soybean from other country cannot. What does it show? So, so it's a lot of political 
decision made for certain reasons. Yeah, the point is, for some countries like uh, China and India, Call Farm is a faceless, no brand in the name, so they, they don't really bother. They just look at the price. But for Europe, yeah, they want to put certification, certified, uh, uh, sustainable. So we have actually done a lot of effort and resources and, and cost involved in making our our oil farm sustainable. But new conditions are imposed, you know, they, so, you know, so they, you don't get the premium after all the work has been done. And you just ask small farmers, and they, they have to spend a lot of money to achieve those standards that, that we put on in this small business. Okay, we cannot bring the WTO until the act is passed. But if once the act is passed, then we are proposing that the government to go on a dispute settlement. Because this is against WTO. But at the moment, we cannot do it because it has not passed. But Kita Lepik and Serpik, Skarang, they are attacked by fuel. What's next? After biofuel, the likelihood is they will ban totally palm oil or even food. So this is a start, and they are very uh, being articulate in their plans. So we, we need we need to do something about it. Um, I have to ask for the video the the bio video on the Delta CEO. So today there were more official videos that were clarifying that was it going to be this policy Delta or there were some other actions taken? We 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 are addressing it internally. Uh, we are addressing this issue. I think today's session we should be focusing on uh, this big issue. You know? This is our big issue now. Because these are the issues which affect the livelihood of our small workers. So we are we are very concerned. You tengok tak ada video yang dia kata makan, tak cukup makan. So I think we, we need to be focusing on that. Okay, ada lagi soalan? Tapi cuma nak tanya, mahu ini by this year? No, definitely, definitely by this year. Dalam masa So, kita, Nash, Dato' Ali Asad is the president of uh, Nash. So, he is going to spearhead his uh, uh, joint delegation. And this is the first time we're doing together. Ini kali pertama kita berkorak bersama. Uh, all as one voice. Never, it has never been done before. Tapi, I think it is timely we do it. And it is timely we show support to the government that we are working together. Okay, I can give you. Because yesterday, baru kita bincang. It's about 1.4 million hectare. Already, MSPU certified. And uh, of course, the target is by January or certified. Uh, but whatever, there is an effort by the government to make sure. See, for mana, kita ni, whatever sustainable practices they want, we are trying to do. Macam sekarang ni, in the world, the total production of CSPO, certified sustainable palm oil, is about 15 million ton. Tapi, the uptake is only 6, 7 million ton. So, is you say you want certified sustainable palm oil, we produce, why are you not buying? So, end of the day, it's about price. So, this is all, you all, who, which one of you watched the video orang tan? Yeah, you all take that video orang tan. This was produced by Greenpeace. Yeah, by Greenpeace, they tunjukkan anak orang hutan, went into a house oh. uh, okay. yang Emma Thompson in voice okay. you see these are all purely to tell people that palm oil 
cross deforestation from oil field 25 orang hutan itu ada Precisely. See, this is the great perception. Today we are living in a world of perception, not about truth. So, and it is high, 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 uh, timely for us to be open, go and offensive. But this is really too nice for too I long. Think, I think we have bent over backwards for so long. The time to stand up and say what we need to say. And we are receiving full support from the PM in this context. I think PM is giving a lot of attention on uh, farm oil because I think, don't forget last year, contribution of farm oil to the GDP is 54 billion, meaning 4.5% of the country's GDP is for farm oil. And even the year before that is even higher because the price was higher then. Maybe the media can help us to promote and tell the real story that this are livelihood of five, six million people who go hungry to wait and somebody needs to tell the story for them. They're not present here to, <coughs> to defend themselves, but the, the lobbies are affecting their land too. I want to share with you what video clip. I will ask our comps people to give each of you that video clip. The video clip about how the poor people suffer because of low price. Just now, I got this video clip yesterday from during the POC normal price of the conference, something here, and I thought that was a good video clip. Maybe you all could viral those clips. This is very touching and affect our small workers. So, just to clarify, the Prime Minister is giving full support. Oh, yes. so, that memorandum passing to the EU is our contribution. But I think the government is already making representation. In fact, now today, at this point of time, there's only a delegation in Europe talking to the European Commission from the Ministry of Prime Minister's team. And most likely next month, there is going to be a joint delegation between the from all producing countries, uh, headed by the ministers of all countries, and even Colombia, uh, to lobby Europe to stop this. Both countries, meaning Malaysia and Indonesia. And also Colombia. Colombia has already joined forces with us to. Kita dalam negara kita ni sekarang kita ada enam ratus lima puluh ribu smallholders whose livelihood depends on palm oil and then it's too direct eh? the spin off to masuk keluarga here they check out 5 juta we got 5.81 million hectares at the moment I think you you heard the minister made a statement about no more expansion. But remember, it's not stopping at 5.8. We say we will keep it at 6 million hectares. <coughs> because our, our forest area in this country is about 50%. But now it's 55%. And if you compare with Europe, a lot of them is only holding about 20-25%. So, we have to bear the burden of what we did last time. So, we become the... the but we agree. We agree that... I mean, the Prime Minister has given the commitment that we will maintain at least 50% forest for us in this country. I think, I think we are sticking to that. Done. If there's none, thank you very much. Okay.